Hello nurses, this is Camp with Nursing Camp and this is Cardiac Camp in the Heart Assessment. And today I'm going to talk to you about black 3D glass from my sticky notes on heart rate and cracking the code on vital signs. Now, black 3D glass are all reasons why a person's heart rate will be less than 60. And that's problematic because the heart generally doesn't want to decrease. It doesn't want to slow down. It wants to increase generally as an underlying cause. And that is covered in my Most Patients Do Wish lecture and where I talk about all the reasons why a high heart rate is there. Now, heart rate being low, the first thing that we'll look at is a beta blockers. And beta blockers, we talked about in the previous lecture, where there's two types of betas, right? So there's beta 1 and beta 2. And beta 1 and beta 2, there is one heart, and then there's two lungs. And they affect each one. Now, with a beta blocker, it's going to affect beta 1. It's going to slow down, slow down that heart rate. So that's why we all check, and if it's less than 60, we will hold that beta blockers. And beta blockers is laugh, beta, lift, uh, belly, laugh, LOL. And that is a class for beta blockers. You can see that in my beta blockers lecture. And we're going to move on to the next thing. Now, the next thing is, is L, and L is there for low potassium. And low potassium is all about conduction. So potassium is very important for conduction of the heart. And when it is low, we always say that potassium low is slow. So potassium is 3.5 to 5.1, and low is slow. It's all slow reasons um, that they start to have. And those slow reasons for hypokalemia is slow respiratory, slow heart rate. And that's why uh, low potassium should always be evaluated when a person has bradycardia. Next is amiodarone, or amisloderone, I like to call it. And amiodarone, amisloderone, is a medication that is an IV drip, and also PO medication. And generally, we monitor for a slow heart rate, mainly AV conduction and that will slow it down. Amiodarone is generally given for a patient who has AFib, and AFib is a regular and has no P waves before it. Next is calcium channel blockers for C. And calcium channel blockers, there's two types. There's DV, right? So there's diltiazem, and, which is cardizem and verapamil. These affect heart rate and will decrease the heart rate. And they, they are important to either hold when you have a low heart rate, less than 60. Next is the K. So that is, we covered that with low K. And then 3D, third degree heart block. Now, third-degree heart block is a major problem because you have the P wave is, is not firing at the same time as the ventricle is firing. So they're not really matching up. And meanwhile, so the heart rates can drop down into the 20s and 30s. These type of patients need a pacemaker. Okay, so next is glucose. Low is acute, you know, glucose is 60 to 100, 60 to 100. When a person becomes hypoglycemic, they become diaphoretic, low blood pressure, low heart rate, and um, they should be evaluated. So glucose should be evaluated when low heart rate. Next is um, athlete. Now, this is a normal finding, and this is important. So a patient, you know, if you have a heart rate in a question, it's less than 60. The first question is out of your mind is, is, are they an athlete? If they're an athlete, that's okay. And that's normal, okay? So always remember that generally in these questions, especially in school and 
and um, when you're studying. Athletes generally are conditioned that their heart rate will generally be less than 60. However, if you have medications in the question, um, it's generally that medication that is causing that heart rate. And that medication should generally be held and not given. Next is sick sinus syndrome. Now, sick sinus syndrome is where the sinus, we're talking about the SP wave, the SA node, is not firing, and there's a problem with the sinus. And so it's it's not always fire, firing, and so the, the, the ventricle isn't being conducted. And then so, therefore, the heart rate will start to go down. Okay. And the last thing is, as I forgot to cover this, was the D. Um, I call it third-degree heart block, but it's actually D digoxin. And digoxin is covered in another lecture. And digoxin, we, we monitor the apical heart rate. It is less than 60. We will um, hold that medications. So in the end, when we're looking at bradycardia and the heart rate, um, remember, bradycardia, the heart doesn't want to slow down. And when it is slowing down, it's usually because of beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, digoxin, or something's wrong, or amiodarone, like slotarone, or something's wrong with the, um, with the conduction. And so what we start to do is, is that we start to look at the underlying cause. It's usually a medications that cause it, or there's a problem, um, or they're just an athlete, and that's a normal finding. Um, my name's Camp, and this is Nursing Camp, and this is Cardiac Camp, and this is where I'm covering my heart assessment. Um, and from my cracking code sticky notes, you can download them at nursingcamp.com or on Pinterest or interest on Facebook. Say hello, and I will talk to you soon.